Hi there YouTube, hope everybody's okay out there in YouTube land. It's me, just reporting in from Dan's haunted cottage. So, I've decided to go out for a bit of a walk today. I've hurt my back, I don't know how I've done it. But, uh, I'm trying to walk it off actually. Walk it off, go through the pain barrier. So, um, I've decided to come over to Highland's house. Which is a great big stately home up near us. Well, I say up near us. It's in Essex, it's probably about 10 miles from us. But, um, I'll speak to you in a minute. Hello! Back again. So, I'll stop filming them because there's people, I don't really like film when I go past people. I don't mind there's loads and loads of people, but there's one, one or two, it looks odd. So, yeah, so I'm over, we're having to walk up the Highlands house, going up a bit of a hill. God, I'm unfit. And, uh, it's, um, they used to hold the V Festival here. They haven't this year. They've held, uh, it's the V Festival under a different name, I think. So, what they're doing is they're um, pulling it all down. I'll show you in a second. It's quite interesting. You never realise the amount of uh, logistics that go into one of these big concerts or uh, one of these um, venues <coughs> until you uh, see the aftermath of it, as it were. So, let me show you. I'll show you. Turn you around and have a look at this. Let's turn you around. So that's just some of it. I mean, there's tons and tons of it being deconstructed. You got all those barriers and they're pulling stages and lights down and more barriers there and more barriers there. And that's all, been, that's all come down apparently. So absolutely tons and tons of work for them. But um, it's a nice walk. It's a nice uh, place to come and have a little ramble. So that's what I decided to do. And I thought, why not take you guys with me? I mean, look at the size of this place. It's absolutely humongous. But then to be fair, it really would need to be, wouldn't it, to uh, constitute having a uh, festival here. Especially a festival as big as, and as popular as the one that's just, uh, just finished. So yeah, just thought I'd come out for an amble. Ramble while I amble, as they say. <laughs> and, uh, Try and walk off this back pain. Stupidest thing, I just did it. I did it uh, bending over actually to pick an old piece of paper up in the bin and uh, just went. It's done it before, but it generally sorts itself out. You know what us men are like? We're martyrs to our pain. You ever hear us moaning about our pain? Not at all. Maybe you do a bit. But it's, you know. It's lovely up here. I'm so, sorry if the wind's blowing. I'm billowing a little bit, but uh, so Highlands House, which is where I'm going, is about half a mile, so it's not that far. So I'll uh, show you a bit more of what's going on here in the uh, way of them pulling down all the uh, stage and stuff. And then I'll show you the house. It's beautiful. There you go. It's not a massive marquee, but it's a fair size. Speaking of my house, <laughs> so it's very, very pretty up here. Very, very pretty, and it's a big place for dog walkers. Not doggers, dog walkers. At weekends, people bring their kids up here. We bring our children up here quite a lot, but uh, in fact, they're here with me today. But I'm not. I've not got them in the vlog because. I decided to walk ahead, get a bit of a head start because obviously they're walking at a better pace than me with my with my injuries. I'm a poor little soldier, but yeah, it's lovely. There's lots of little uh, nooks and crannies in this place. If you look, there's little little signboards tell you what things are, which is pretty cool. And what we have here, excuse me, is Flint Cottage, and it's pretty cool because. Uh, Willow and her friend, when we bring them up here, even Fox now is starting to uh, subscribe to this school of thought. They think that that's a witch's cottage. So what I do is I say to them, right, you've got to knock on the door, but you've got to get away quickly in case the witch comes out. And you should see them, the trepidation. They, never, they haven't, to this day, knocked on that door yet. They've got pretty close, but they're never ever quite brave enough just to uh, knock on the door and and say hello to the witch, say hello to the alleged and pretend witch. So uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. They love it. Children's fantasy, eh? 
makes you wish for wish for your youth again. Although my, my youth is so far behind me that I can't even see it in my memories anymore. <laughs> Although Hazel would say that I've not grown up anyway, so uh, probably still in it. Second flourish of youth. So I've just found some pamphlets that have been left over from the weekend. So what was the old festival is now called the Rise Festival. And there's like visitor maps and I'll show you. So there you go. The Rise Festival with maps. It's not your Tupney Hapney Festival, you know. It's a proper, proper big festival. I used to have lots of friends years ago when I was younger that used to attend it. I didn't because I was known as what's known as a boring fart and I would rather go around and see historical buildings. But, um, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good festival as the festival goes, so I've heard. And this is where you would have found oiks like myself in the uh, 19th and 18th century working. This would be the stable yard. This would be the tradesman's entrance. So it's the old stable block. And now they've got a lovely little cafe and a few little shops in there. So, I love a bookshop. Let's have a look in here, shall we? See what we can find in the gems. As you can see, guys, it's very pretty in there, a little courtyard. I won't take you too far in there because uh, it's the old stable block, because obviously there's loads and loads of people. But I'm going to walk around and see the other courtyard. I have got some books, by the way, and I'll show them to you very shortly. Have you ever queued up waiting for something to eat and the people in front of you dither and um and ah? Uh, and then, so I know, and, and you're waiting there for about 10 minutes, and then they said, no, nah, we don't want it. And then, just as you think they're going, you're going to get a break, you can go and order your food. They spin around, and then they say, oh, well, can I have an ice cream then, please? With no regard for anybody but themselves. Yes, it's a nightmare, isn't it? I'm, I'm talking about her. Scream in a minute. <laughs> it's bad, isn't it? <laughs> you have to excuse Kirsten. She's, she comes from up north. <laughs> she's going to clump in a minute and she comes from down south but she's a, she's a smaller problem of that <laughs> so yeah it, it's, we're, it's, a, it's just a nightmare I've had to sit down and Kirsten and Hazel are still queuing up and yeah it's a nightmare absolute nightmare I think Kirsten's going to end up clumping somebody in a minute <laughs> probably me Anyway, I'll let you know how this pans out. I'm going to leave it on a cliffhanger. Is that EastEnders or something, isn't it? I don't know. It could be bloody Coronation Street for all I know. Anyway, get back to you in a sec. Oh, I don't know. Me and my first world problems. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a better day than me. Waking up with a, a bad back. Kirsten making out, she's hanging herself over there, she's that depressed. Well, apparently it's the woman behind the till as well, so they must have worked in unison, customer and uh, salesperson. Works in unison to make this a very slow, hello. slow, Quick, hello. <laughs> See, got to contend with all the kids as well. Nightmare, I will get, I will get a vlog out today, even though I have to scratch it out because it's pretty planned. But uh, yeah, I'm determined to get some sort of vlog out today. Um, even if it gets a thumbs down, I'm going to get a bloody vlog out today, I'll tell you that. But yeah, so they're uh, me and my first world problems, I don't know. It's amazing though, isn't it? We moan about silly things like this and we get all uptight and that. And um, there's, you know, when you think of the bigger problems in the world and some of the mountains people have to climb, metaphorically speaking. It's quite insignificant, isn't it, really? Oh, how can we get philosophical? Hey, you get philosophy on my channel as well. You don't do too bad. Your history, philosophy, ghost hunting, family days out. Very eclectic, isn't it? Right, so I was speaking to a couple of guys last night and we're sorting out, this is what I meant to tell you actually, we're sorting out another couple of ghost hunts. There should be one going ahead very, very soon. Um, I spoke to a friend of mine as well who runs a particular haunted venue, very haunted venue. Oh, I'll get there, have you back in a minute, buddy. Uh, runs a very, very haunted venue and he's, uh, he's very kindly said that I can get in there. But I can't say too much. Um, but all will be revealed shortly. I've got to go. Kids do the idea. Nightmare. <laughs>
Say that again. Hello. 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 Are you you're the captain, the pair of you? Pair of you putting my hat on? Yeah. Can I have my hat back, please? Yeah. Thank you. Can I have it? Because I'm so old now. I'm so old now that I'm going bald and my head, head is very cold yeah, without a hat. What? What well, well, witch? Where? Where's the witch? Ha, ha, ha. Is it? What are you doing? You're on, you on a walking stick. Ha, ha, ha. He's on a hiking pole and he's pretending it's a broomstick. I've got something super exciting to tell you in a minute, guys. I am very happy and thanks to Hazel. She just found something that was phenomenal. I'm very excited. I can't wait to tell you about it. Give me a second. Let me wear the boys down, make them tired, and then I'll get back. To you. So as I was saying, guys, um, I went into that bookshop and I, well, excuse me, I do love that. I've got a far for new, I think. And um, I was looking at books as I always do. Obviously, that's what you do when you're in a bookshop. You look at books. You don't go and get yourself some. Uh, you don't go and get a pint of milk and a sandwich, do you? Anyway, so I was looking around the bookshop and I always look for history books of which I found three which are quite good they sort of met my favour and I always ask about um, any books on the supernatural or the paranormal or anything like that particularly in this bookshop and because it's antiquated it's more than anything it's not just a second-hand bookshop per se it's pretty much antiquated so you can get all sorts of first editions and stuff in there and one of the books I got was this one, which is pretty good, 1066. And it's the Battle of York, Stamford Bridge and Hastings. So that's going to be very history, very interesting. You know what I'm like my history. The second one was in Search of the Dark Ages by Michael Wood. I have had that before and read it. It's a wonderful book. I don't know what happened to it. And the third one was the Gunpowder Plot. So that's Terror, Terror and Faith in 1605. So that should be a really good read. But... The pièce de résistance wasn't found by me. So initially I went in there and I said to this guy, have you got anything paranormal or supernatural? And he came back with, we don't really stock stuff like that because it's not really a good seller. Kind of beg to differ really because everybody's interested in the paranormal, at least to some extent. Well, let's just say a good 90% of people or so. So I said, so you don't stock it? No, we don't stock it. He went, it's not a good seller. He said, it will just sit around and dirty, dirty. So I took him at his word. So I said, well, don't worry. I'll have a scout around anyway. And if I find anything, you know, that's just as much fun as, um, as being given a copy of something. So I picked these three books, uh, gave him the cash, came outside. Then Hazel wanted to, uh, Hazel and Kirsten wanted to come back in there no, with me. they had to come in there because the kids have got Oh, well, they had to come in there because the kids had come in there. But I do know that Kirsten wanted to go in there. So, so she wanted to look around anyway. So next thing I know, I've seen Hazel and she's lurking over by the uh, pay desk. And I, I thought, what she got? And do you know what, guys? Who's my hero? You know who my hero is, don't you? My hero is Harry Price, and Hazel found this. I can't believe it. I can't believe it, and I, I've got an inkling it's a first edition. It's the right... It is. It is a first edition, so it's just been quantified. It's a first edition. Let me just show you, because I... I'm covered in goosebumps. I could cry. Honestly, I could cry. I'm that happy. It's Poltergeist over England. I've got a copy of this. I haven't got a first edition. I could never ever afford a first edition of this. They are like right. They are like hen's teeth. They are like hen's teeth. Actually, hens do have teeth. Do you know that? Uh, but not many. That's why they say they're as rare as hen's teeth. Anyway, getting off of that subject now. Poltergeist over England, which was one of his. his, his it was one of his uh, better known books. Well, you, all of his books were well known by Harry Price. Harry Price, the Ghost Hunter. Now, as if that wasn't good enough first edition poltergeist over england look inside it cost us or it cost hayes eight pounds she bought it for me and it is signed by harry price august the 15th 1945 yeah that is it guys hazel has just bought me a first edition of poltergeist over england signed by none other than the author and my hero, top ghost hunter ever, Harry Price. Can you, uh, do you know what, I I can't get my head around it, I just can't. I'm just blown sideways. I mean, I'm, I'm cock a hoop. Absolutely cock a hoop as they are going, using those old fashioned sayings. I told you I'd bring them back. 
but yeah I just can't believe it I'm just I'm I'm stunned it's like I've been hit by a bat by a cricket bat it's, I'm just not for six it's unbelievable um got a good wife Hazel says, and I've got a good wife. Who's absailing down uh, wrong, the north? Who's, who's absailing? I'm absailing down the Northampton lift tower. Give me some money. My mum has raised 190 pounds and I've got 50 quid. We'll put a link in the comments. Put some money in there. Don't send her money. She's got a spending problem. It's not me. It's on just giving. I can't have it. It goes to it goes to the assisted it is, guys, trust. Put it she, in there. Do you know what? She says that, but she never puts a link in. If I don't get the money, I'm going to sell this book. And, and, and put that towards it. Put money in quickly, yeah. please put some money in. I think you want to raise two hundred pounds, but so she's got about fifty. Pounds. How much? Fifty quid, one hundred ninety-nine. Mum's got one hundred ninety. She's got fifty pounds already in the kitty. Yeah. But no, but seriously, guys. I mean, yeah, it's for our, our. It's not for our nephews and that. It is for our nephews in a roundabout way because they suffer with CF and uh, yeah, we're trying to raise or Hazel's trying to raise some money for the foundation. So it's uh, for for the better of everybody. Um, and for the good of everybody. So, yeah, so I can't believe that, guys. Poltergeist over... I couldn't have written this myself. This is like... It's not scripted. Believe me, I don't do things like that. I just can't believe it. I'm... I'm... I'm going to sleep with this book. It's going to go everywhere with me. I'm going to put it into a vault. I'm going to carry the vault with me. I'm going to... I just... It's not going anywhere, this book. This book is going to be pride of place. It's going to be my most prized possession after my children and Hazel of course so yeah so that's pretty good I'm really happy speak to you in a bit guys